located in the northern end of the Venetian lagoon is the cheerfully colourful island of Burano. Burano is made up of a group of four small islands that are linked together by a series of small bridges. Now whether you're visiting Burano for a day trip or to stay a few days, this guide will help you experience the best this island has to offer. So here are some truly unique things to do in Burano. Pronti? Ready? Cominciamo! Let's get started! Ciao ciao, mi chiamo Michelle, sono la Intrepid Guide, la vostra guida per imparare l'italiano, per viaggiare o per entrare in contatto con le vostre origini italiane come me, attraverso il mio metodo originale 8020. Hi, my name is Michelle, I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to learning Italian for travel or to connect with your Italian heritage like I did, all by using my unique 8020 method. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell notification so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Now let's go and explore Burano. Andiamo, let's go. <music> One of the best ways to get acquainted with Burano is by wandering around and exploring the charming colourful houses. Now since before the Venetian Republic, Burano was home to fishermen and legend says that the houses were painted bright hues so they could see their way home when the fog blanketed the lagoon, kind of like now. However, this isn't the real reason. In fact, buildings were painted using more natural and muted colours, not the vibrant ones you see today. The reason for painting them in different colours is more practical than you might think. Since each house is quite small and families consisted of up to 12 children, they would treat the area immediately outside and around their home as an extra room. They would keep things outside, wash items, even set up a table to eat during the warmer months of the year. These are still things that locals do today. And having a unique for each house was important because it set the boundary as to what was your area and that of your neighbour. So no trespassing. <laughs> At one time you had to ask permission before painting your house, in which case you were allotted certain colours you could use. This is no longer the case and you can choose any colour you like as long as it's not identical to your neighbours. For the same reasons that I mentioned earlier, we need to set clear boundaries between your house and your neighbours. Just like clothes, colours go in and out of fashion here as well. In fact, during the 90s, hot pink was all the rage, which is why many houses are still painted that colour. Burano was most likely settled by the Romans. Then in the 6th century, it was occupied by the Veneti from Altino, who were escaping the barbarians on the mainland. Now many merchants settled on the neighbouring island of Torcello, where there were some 25,000 residents, while mainly fishermen settled here on Burano. Over the next 200 years, those in Torcello continued to move south, where they finally settled in Venice. But those in Burano stayed here, making them the oldest surviving inhabitants of the lagoon still in their original settlement. According to some, Burano was named after one of the gates of their former city in Altino. Another legend is that it was named by early settlers after a small island called Buranello da Mar, which was 8 kilometres to the south, which was located close to the sea. But according to my local guide Silvia, who was born and raised here, she believes it could be due to the fact that Burano sits in a microclimate that receives a cold north wind year round, called the Bora wind. And from Bora, the name Burano is said to have evolved. I guess we'll never know. Burano is just seven kilometers or four miles from Venice or a 45 minute trip from St. Mark's Square by Vaporetto, meaning water bus. And getting here is easy. Just hop on the Vaporetto number 12 from Fondamente Nove, that's the name of it. And the Vaporetto will also stop at Murano before continuing on to Burano. <music> Behind me in the distance is Chiesa di San Martino Vescovo. Now this is a 16th century Roman Catholic church with an infamous leaning bell tower, which has become a symbol of the island. In 1750, a fire destroyed part of the church that was later rebuilt. However, the bell tower was considered too small. So the uppermost part was cut off and a higher one was added, standing 10 meters taller than the original one. After a while though, the bell tower began to lean under the new weight of the tower that it wasn't designed to support. 
In fact, one night in 1961, the bell sounded all of a sudden, confusing residents. This was the first sign that the tower was unstable. Thanks to expert engineers from Naples, they came here to reinforce the foundations, driving long wooden poles consisting of iron all the way to 23.5 metres deep through the mud to reach the sand to create the required support. The top of the Leaning Tower had always been crowned by an angel, but during a storm in 1867, this fell off. Today in its place is an iron cross. Bussolai or Esse Buranelli are typical biscuits from Burano and are an absolute must when you visit. Now, originally these biscuits were circular in shape like a compass, but over time the shape changed to an S, which they say represents the curves of the Grand Canal. Today you can find both types, the classic Bussola with an accent on the A meaning compass or the Esse meaning the letter S. These dry biscuits were prepared by the wives of fishermen for their husbands to take with them as they kept for a long time and are very caloric. Now, in the past, this was very important as the fishermen spent long periods at sea. Other than the shape, the recipe has remained almost unchanged and is typically found leading up to Easter. The recipe contains a short crust pastry with butter, egg yolks, a single whole egg, loads of butter and sugar and some lemon peel. The original and the best bakery or patisserie who have been making this traditional recipe for over a hundred years is this one here, Pasticceria Costantini. <music> So we just popped into the Pasticceria Costantini who are the original makers of the Buranelli Biscotti. So I've just picked up one of the larger ones which are more soft but you can also get them in a smaller size that are already packed in little bags and those ones are a bit more crunchy but I think you have to try both so let's do it. Mm, and that hint of lemon is the best. <laughs> As with most things in Burano, there is a legend behind everything, and the most famous is the story of how lace making came to the island. As the legend goes, a poor fisherman was in love with a local girl, but didn't have enough funds to his name to ask for her hand in marriage. Then during a sea trip to the east, he heard the song of a siren, but unlike other fishermen before him, he resisted her charms because of his love for another woman. In return for his loyalty, the queen, who was fascinated by this loyalty, slapped the side of his boat with her tail and from the foam created by the movement of the water formed a marine flower. With this, the fisherman took the precious flower to the father of his beloved to ask for her hand in marriage. The father agreed. Before the flower began to wilt, the design was recreated as a lace wedding veil for the young bride admired and envied by all the young women on the island and they began to imitate the lace of her veil using even thinner needle and thread hoping to recreate an embroidery even more beautiful for their own wedding dress. While this legend is very romantic it was in the 16th century that women of Burano were introduced to making lace with needles thanks to the Venetian ruled island of Cyprus. It was from then on that Burano rose to fame for its delicate and laboriously created lace, with its lace exported all throughout Europe. In the 16th century, Venetian needle lace making was an elevated art form. Many girls started learning as young as eight years old. Then after six years of training, they were trained enough to be hired. And this was the first paid job for women of Burano, earning a monthly salary, sometimes even out earning their partners. After roughly 20 years, you could be a teacher. What's interesting is that with all this time that it took to learn the techniques of lace making, many women couldn't read or write. While bobbin lace became professionalized in other areas of Italy in the 17th century, other European nations struggled to emulate the women of Burano and their intricate designs in their signature stitches, which were recognized in banquet halls and courts across the continent. In fact, the court of King Louis XIV in France employed several Venetian lace makers to teach their skill and facilitate home manufacturing. In the following centuries, Venetian lace fell out of demand as it had to compete with cheaper manufactured products and fashion trends. 
lace production in Burano has survived as a cherished traditional art form rather than as a prosperous commercial trade product and tourism being its main market. Now handmade items are still created exclusively by the island's female residents who learn the craft at a young age of just 10 years old at times and if you spend enough time in Burano you will spot them seated in a shop front or doorway in complete flow of their ancient craft. Many of them learn their trade from their mothers or grandmothers or by attending the prestigious lace making school Scuola di Merletti which was established in 1872 and closed in 1970. Today a few still make lace in the traditional manner and it is extremely time consuming and therefore expensive. This school is now the home of the Museo del Merletto or the Lace Museum which follows the history of the trade. On display are pattern books, journals, paintings, furniture, costumes and an extensive collection of samples. In one of the rooms a group of local lace makers often sit tatting and gossiping beneath the pictures of the lace school where many of them learned their craft. Feel free to ask them questions as they go about their work. After visiting the Lace Museum, I highly recommend you also visit Dalla Lidia. Now this is a lace shop with a two level gallery with an extensive display of antique lace. Here you'll find many more exquisite examples of lace compared to those in the Lace Museum. You'll also be able to buy authentic Murano lace made by an elderly lady who comes here to create lace most days. You can see her anywhere between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Got a trip coming up? Want to communicate with your Italian partner or relatives? Now you can learn Italian with my unique 8020 method. Just click on the link in the description below this video to find out more about my series of self-paced online Italian video courses that will help you become conversational in Italian so you can connect with the locals and have authentic experiences. <laughs> As you wander around Burano, take a note of how the window shutters are held open here. It's quite cool actually, and they don't make these stoppers anymore. Now on the traditional ones, you'll see that the windows are held open by a bracket. On the end of that bracket is the face of a man. If you flick it down to close the window, you'll see the face of a woman. These two faces are said to represent the owners of the house. Now they don't make these anymore, so if you do see it, take a photo and send it to me. I'll leave a comment below this video. Where I'm standing now is Piazza Balsadare Galuppi and it's the main piazza here in Burano. Balsadare Galuppi, who was born here in Burano in 1706 and died in Venice in 1785, his nickname was Il Buranello and he was one of the most important Italian composers of his time, noted for his operas and particularly opera buffa, meaning funny. His interest in music developed thanks to his father, a skilled barber who played the violin as a hobby. In 1748, Balsadari Galuppi became Maestro di Cappella at St Mark's Cathedral. This was considered the Venetian top musical spot. Now he lived and worked in Venice for most of his life, though he spent a few years in London working at the Royal Theatre and in St Petersburg working for Catherine II the Great. To express their gratitude to this great composer, the island of Burano named its main square after Balsadare Galuppi and erected this monument in his honour. Of all the houses of Burano, the house of Beppi Sua, also known as Beppi of Candies, is one of the most colourful and famous on the island, decorated with all kinds of geometric shapes. Beppi, aka Giuseppe Toselli, not only loved to paint, but he was also a movie buff. He worked as a janitor at the cinema Farvin, but when the cinema closed, he began to sell candies and sweets in Burano's Galuppi Square, which is how he got his nickname Beppi of Candies. Until the 1980s, during the warm summer evenings, he would organise an outdoor cinema in his Campiello, which is a local term for a small Venetian square, into which other calli or streets lead. Beppi would hang a white sheet on the wall opposite his house and project cartoons and other entertaining films for the children of Burano. 
The reason why Beppe painted all these shapes and didn't use a single colour for his whole house is because he couldn't afford enough paint to do so. Instead, the locals would donate what they had left over of their paint, which is why so many colours are used. E ricordati che il suo cognome, il suo nickname era Beppe Sua, che vuol dire sweaty, sudato. E era un modo per scherzare perché lui era un po' pigro, he was lazy, no? Uh, calling him the sweaty Beppe was a way to joke about him. He was not a great worker, he was a lazy person, but with great personality and look what he did. And he is still alive in our memories. It's 2022, he died in 2007. As you wander around the bell tower area, have a look at this house number 134, which shows different images, but what's interesting about it is that it also lists Alta Marea, meaning high tide here that arrived in Burano over the years. Now, while most people visit Burano for a day trip from Venice, I really think it's worth staying at least a couple of nights. Up until 11am and from sunset onwards, you can really appreciate the beauty of this colourful island and enjoy a more calm atmosphere with just the locals. Now, by staying the night, it will also allow you to join a morning walking tour with a local guide who can really bring the island to life beyond the pretty facades that so many people come here for. To join the same walking tour I did, just click on the link that I've shared in the description below this video. Siamo molto orgogliosi della nostra isola, quindi speriamo che insomma, la bellezza, l'estetica è qualcosa che ci piace molto e quindi eh, speriamo sempre che la nostra casa venga vista come perfetta e cerchiamo di tenerla perfetta ma non per i turisti ma per noi perché è il nostro modo di vivere quindi possiamo avere casa piccola poco ma perfetta Planning a trip to Italy? Don't be treated like a tourist. Brush up on the basics of Italian with my self-paced online video course, Intrepid Italian for Travel. Now in just two weeks, I'll help you become conversational in Italian so you can create lifelong memories as you mingle with locals, get local tips, avoid tourist traps, and make new friends. For more details, click on the link in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this guide of unique things to do in Burano. For any questions, just ask in the comments below. For more information about the tour I took, I've shared all the links that you need below this video. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Until next time, thanks for watching and buon viaggio. Ciao.